Hello everyone, welcome back. So in this video, we'll be discussing more on uh, the software-based uh, tools like those mutex locks and the semaphores. So in the previous video, we have seen the hardware-based synchronization methods using uh, machine-level instructions like test and set and compare and so on. So in this video, we will focus more on the software-based tools. We'll just maybe go through uh, some of the issues which are there in uh, hardware-based instructions like test and set and compare and so on. And uh, we'll also see how we can actually uh, overcome these issues by making use of the software-based tools, which is uh, mutex and the semaphore. So yeah, let's get started. Okay. Um, we didn't get rid of this. Okay. So uh, there are some issues with the hardware-based uh, synchronization methods. So what are those issues? Uh, like the hardware-based synchronization methods, whatever we saw, the test and set and compare and so on. So usually uh, these are generally these are uh, not accessible to the uh, application programmer. So these are generally inaccessible. Since these are machine level instructions, uh, access to these instruction uh, it is like directly not accessible for the machine uh, for the application programmers. So it is generally inaccessible, which kind of leads to issues where you cannot even use them directly. And the other thing is these are generally a little complex to you know, understand. So if we had to just see based on the complexity of the machine level code, maybe uh, an application programmer, if he wanted to, let's say, increment a value of some variable by one. So let's say there was that counter variable and we just wanted to make it uh, increment by one. So in like high level language, you would have just written it as uh, counter plus plus. But if you look at the machine level instructions for the same uh, uh, code, it would be like you would have to load the value into some register, load the value of counter into some register, then you, have, you would have to actually increment the value of the uh, value which is stored in the register and then you'll have to finally store it back in, in the variable. So just for incrementing one variable by one, you internally have to do all these. So at machine level, it is like all these, but at high level, it is just this. So usually the machine level instructions are a little complex and you cannot directly, it's generally inaccessible, these uh, operations. So with uh, high level languages like these, you cannot directly access this. Even though internally it might be doing the same thing, but yeah, it's generally inaccessible for the application programmers. So these are some of the issues which we see with the hardware based uh, instructions usually. So since these are some issues, we have to come up with some software based solutions which are kind of uh, accessible for the application programmers to use and they should be uh, relatively easier also. So yeah, so to overcome these two issues, the the designers of OS, they actually came up with some uh, software based tools like uh, Mutex and Semaphores. So we'll just go through these in a bit more detail now. So let's talk about Mutex first. So what is Mutex? So Mutex is actually a lock, as I've mentioned here, it is actually a lock. So when you say Mutex, it's nothing but Mutex lock. And Mutex, it is a combination of two words. So this is nothing but mutual and uh, X is for exclusion. So if you remember, mutual exclusion is one of the requirements for any solution to critical section problem. So mutex lock is a software based uh, tool. This is the simplest tool which is available for us to use. Now, yeah, so as we have already seen, I think multiple times, any program, it has like four sections. So there is an entry section, there is a critical section, there is exit section, and finally there is a remainder section. So any process wanting to enter into its critical section, it needs to actually uh, satisfy the three requirements which I've seen uh, in the previous video, the mutual exclusion, progress and bounded, uh, bounded weighting. And that particular code is actually written in the entry section. So the entry section code and the exit section code is important. Uh, this code is actually what helps in achieving process synchronization and making sure that there is no race condition. So yeah, we'll see how mutex lock can be actually implemented in these two uh, sections of the code and how we can actually avoid race conditions and make sure that the that there is only one process in the critical section. So yeah, mutex lock, it is implemented using two methods. So one is called acquire. Then there's one more method called release. Or you can just think of this as lock and this as unlock. So acquire is nothing but acquiring the mutex lock 
which you would basically acquire in the entry section before entering into the critical section you'll acquire the lock and after you are done with your critical section code you'll basically release the lock in the exit section so we will see how this acquire is like uh, written internally so what this acquire function has so if you see the internal code acquire and release so these two actually depend on one common variable called available so let's call it available, which is uh, a shared variable between these two functions. So what acquire does is acquire will just check for the variable available, which is a bool variable. So if the variable is, let's say not available. So if the lock is not available, then no process should be allowed to enter into the critical section. So it just goes and waits uh, it just enters into this busy wait uh, condition and once the available value is set to true which means the lock is available so in such a case you will actually come out and you will just make it false to avoid any other process enter into the critical section we'll maybe just go through this with an example again i'm just writing the code for now and in release you'll just make available true So these are uh, the two instructions which are there, one is acquire and one is release. So in acquire, you uh, you wait for the variable to become available, for the lock to become available and as soon as you get the lock, you make it false so that no other process can actually enter into the critical section and in the release, you just make the value of available as true. So acquire would be written in the entry section here, you would write acquire and release would be a part of the exit uh, section. Okay. So now we can maybe just uh, try and see how these two would work by taking an example of two processes. So let's say we have P1 and P2. So both are trying to access the critical section. So let's say initially P1, uh, so both would go ahead and try to acquire the lock because this is the first part of the code that they'll try to execute. So when both of these call acquire, so let's say both of these try to acquire the lock. Now, this acquire is actually an atomic operation. So that is very important here. So acquire is atomic. So which means if let's say process P1 called acquire and uh, it was able to, let's say uh, initially this would be actually false. Uh, no, this would be actually true. So the lock would kind of be available initially. So let's say P1 went ahead and called acquire first before P2. So when P1 goes and calls acquire, what will happen is value of, of available was true. So not of true means it is false. So it will actually not wait here. It, it won't go in an infinite loop, keep waiting. It won't do that. So it will come out, it will set the value of available to false, which means this will be updated to zero. And once it acquires the lock, so the next thing after it acquires, it enters into the critical section. So P1 is now inside the critical section. Now, even if P2 goes and calls the function acquire, what would happen is, this value is actually set to false. So not of false is true. So this condition holds true. It goes and keeps waiting for the value to become false, which will happen, I mean, for the value to become true, which will happen only when the process P1 calls release in the exit, which is here. So after this, it will go ahead and call release. So till then, uh, P1 is like busy waiting. So P2 is, uh, sorry, P2 is actually busy waiting. And as soon as P1 goes and calls release, the value again becomes true. So P2, since it was executing this, now that this has become true, not of true is false. So it will actually come out here, set the value again to true, uh, yeah, sorry, again to false, and it will go ahead and enter into the critical section. And no other process would be allowed to enter into the critical section till the value of available becomes true, which will be possible only when P2 will call the release next, which would be here. So yeah, that is how uh, process synchronization is achieved using the mutex lock concept and using acquire and release functions. Uh, yeah, I think we can maybe go ahead and now check uh, how the semaphores work. I just need to get rid of this. Okay, uh, so similar to mutex, semaphores also kind of work in a similar way. So semaphore is nothing but it's just an integer value. You can just assume it to be an integer value. So this is just an int variable. 
and similar to mutex it also has like two functions this has functions called wait and signal wait is also sometimes uh, referred to with the function v and signal with p so let's say there is a semaphore called s now how this wait would actually look like is you would wait on the semaphore s so this is similar to the lock function or the acquire function but instead of directly having a boolean value we have an integer value here so while this is less than or equal to 0 we will actually keep busy waiting and as soon as this comes out we will just decrement this by 1 and for signal you would just uh, increment the value by 1 we will discuss more on semaphores maybe in the next video but yeah just to uh, keep it aligned with mutex lux this is kind of similar to mutex lux the only difference is instead of having a dependency on the available boolean variable we have an integer uh, variable here that's the only difference between mutex and uh, semaphores so you have more control with semaphores than uh, when you compare it with mutex lux So I think that's pretty much it about uh, mutex locks and semaphores. We'll maybe discuss more about uh, semaphores in the next video. Thank you.